Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There is a great video online right now. It's at pregame.com. It uh, is from one of the world's best sports bettors, a guy named Steve Fezzik, where he criticizes futures betting where he says that gamblers should avoid what he calls needle in a haystack bets. He points out that Las Vegas casinos sometimes net 50% profit on all the futures betting action that they take in. Right? He says that smart guys, wise guys, don't really talk too much about futures betting odds. What they do is they take over unders in terms of wins for teams. Now I couldn't disagree more. I believe the futures plays are really one of the best opportunities a gambler has to take money away from the casino. And let me just make the other argument. I'm in the minority. I don't mind swimming against the tide. I hope I continue to swim against the tide because quite frankly it's because people believe that futures betting is a bad opportunity that it creates opportunity for gamblers who like futures betting like me. Let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles right now. Just to put my position in perspective let me be clear on what my position is. I believe you need to watch the futures market every week. I believe you want to have a basket of teams from that futures market because you're being compensated for the risk. right? I believe you should bet futures not expecting your team to win anything. Rather, just expecting your team to take up some of the real estate in the playoffs. Why? Right? Just to have a ticket to the dance in the playoffs. So then you can maneuver and be a more aggressive better, knowing that your bets are partially, not fully, but partially insured. So let me give you an example, because people ask me about it from time to time. I have spoken to some uh, big, big time gamblers, and I know they disagree with me. So be it. Whatever. Right? Let's say I hate the Philadelphia Eagles. Right? Forget the fact that they're 8-5. and five. Forget the fact that they have a share right now of the NFC East lead. Forget the fact that the three teams remaining on the Eagle schedule, cumulatively, have only won 45% of their games. Forget the fact that the Eagles have an innovative offense and one of the best rushing attacks in the game, right? Let's say I don't believe the Philadelphia Eagles are good for anything. Let's say I doubt their chances of winning it all. I look around, I see teams like Seattle, I see teams like Carolina, I see teams like the 49ers, and I'm thinking, come on. What are the odds that Nick Foles and the Eagles beat a team like Seattle in Seattle. So let's say I don't care for the Eagles. Even here, December the 12th, 2013, when the casinos are offering me, I hope you're sitting down here, 25 to 1 odds. That's today, by the way. 25 to 1 odds to win the whole thing. 25 to 1. Right? Let's say that I'm thinking, you know what? Eagles have to play the Cowboys the last game of the season. Forget the fact that the Cowboy defense was completely ineffective. And I'm being generous here. In their last game against the Bears. Forget the fact that key Cowboys, right, have injuries. Forget the fact that that Cowboy secondary might not be able to cover me or my neighbor if we decided to be wide receivers. Right? Let's say I believe the Cowboys beat the Eagles 
the last game of the season. Well, my point to you is simply this. When you're getting 25 to 1 odds, 25 to 1 odds, let's say I, without getting compensated, wouldn't even think about the Eagles. They're not going to win at all. But at 25 to 1 odds, maybe I put a buck on the Eagles. Right? Just a dollar. Why? Because I realize an 8 and 5 team in December that already leads their division might actually make the playoffs. Right? The Cowboys might lose before they play the Eagles the last game of the season. Right? Worse yet, the Eagles have an opportunity, especially against this opposition, right? 45% winning percentage, to actually win their last three games. Right? Or to win two of the three. To finish the season with 10 or 11 wins. So let's say I've done the math. I realize that some teams, you know, the Packers, you know, the Bears, have issues at quarterback. Right? And that the Eagles might get in the playoffs. Might even get in as the division winner. At 25 to 1, even if I don't care about the Eagles, understand what that means. That means I could go into the Cowboy game, regular season game. And if I truly believe that the Cowboys are a better team than the Eagles, I can bet, and we'll just imagine the VIG at zero. I could bet two bucks on the Cowboys. If the Cowboys win that game, and I win two bucks, then guess what? I'm fully compensated for the one dollar I had on the Eagles at 25 to 1. Let's say the Eagles actually beat the Cowboys. Keep in mind, I still have leverage. Right? I've paid one dollar. I would still have a chance to win 23 in the playoffs. Now let's say I just know Eagles aren't going to win in the playoffs. So their first playoff game, whoever they play, and keep in mind, right now I'm out three bucks, right? The dollar I bet at 25 to 1 plus the two dollars I bet against the Eagles the first game. So I'm out three bucks right now. So, of course, the Eagle first game, I can say, you know what? Let me bet four bucks on the other team, right? The Eagle opponent, right? Keep in mind, in a sense, I'm playing with house money. If the Eagle opponent beats the Eagles... Guess what? I've made a dollar off the exercise, right? Again, we're imagining a world with no VIG. So I bet four to win four, right? Minus the three I've lost, right? The one dollar on the Eagles to win it all at 25 to one in December, right? Plus the two dollars I bet on the Cowboys. Well, I've made a profit. I can back away from the play and laugh about it. But let's go further. Let's say the Eagles actually win that game. In other words, this team I don't care for has made the playoffs and actually has won the first game of the playoffs. So at that point, I'm out $7. But understand, I still could possibly win $18 off the original play. So then the next Eagle opponent, this is all off the original investment, I haven't even increased it. The next Eagle opponent, I can bet $10 against the Eagles. 10. Right? In a world with no VIG, understand that if that team wins, then I've made all my money back. Right? That's what leverage does for you. That's why these futures bets are good things. Because you're just betting a dollar at 25 to 1 odds. Right? Not hypothetically. Those are the odds currently being offered. On a team you might believe in or might not believe in. Just so if they get in the playoffs, you actually can play with the leverage. Now let's go further. Let's say I got the Carolina Panthers at 30 to 1. Folks, Panthers are being offered well higher than that early in the season. 
right? Let's say I followed my own advice and every week I just tried to look at quality teams where I was getting crazy leverage. Let's say I have the Panthers. In fact, let's let's make it really easy. Let's say I have the Panthers at the same 25 to 1 that the Eagles are being offered at right now. Let's say I got them when they were undervalued. Let's say the Eagles make the playoffs. I don't even have to fool around with the Cowboy game because let's say the Cowboys lose before that Eagle game. Right? Let's say the Eagles make the playoffs. And that 25 to 1 bet is live. And let's say the first team they play in the playoffs are the Carolina Panthers who I also have a position on at 25 to 1. Folks, I don't even have to bet on that game, right? I'm guaranteed the winner of that game, right? Still being alive in the playoffs at 25 to 1 odds, right? Then I can start hedging as needed. Unless, of course, their next game, they're playing another team that I have another position with leverage on, right? So I hope you uh, consider sports betting to be sports investing. Consider these futures odds to really be options. That's what they are, right? Just like you have stock options, these are betting options. And what you should do is view it all as a game, right? Where all you're trying to do is to get things like 25 to 1 leverage right on quality undervalued teams that if they get into the playoffs can actually allow you to hedge the play or the play itself might self hedge because you might have other money on other teams including teams they play right take a look at the odds right now on the Kansas City Chiefs for example nine win team or the Philadelphia Eagles, eight win team. Casinos throwing around leverage. Contrary to conventional wisdom, I believe when the casinos throwing around leverage on teams that quite frankly are in the case of KC, have a great running game, have an excellent defense. In the case of Philadelphia, have team speed, have an excellent rushing attack, have an excellent offense. I believe savvy gamblers need to take those plays. Your end game is just to end up with a profit at the end of the day. I think getting a profit is easier to do when you're getting things like 25 to 1 odds. Think about it. Look it through. I understand I've simplified things by removing the VIG and also by removing actual odds, right? If the Eagles play some team that's favored on a money line, you're not going to get even money odds, right? You might be paying a minus 200 or a minus 250. So think it through. It is complicated, but I actually think at the end of the day, as I've said, view it as an option, right? 25 to 1 leverage is plenty to work with. Even if your team exits the playoffs, in the first round. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.